All right. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Is this mic good? Yeah? OK, awesome. Uh, my name is Brianna Felix. I am with Wiki Education. And here is Ian Ramjohn. And I'm Ian? also with Wiki Education. Wiki Education. We are the Wikipedia experts at WikiEd. And uh, we support university instructors and students in adding information to Wikipedia. Uh, I see some familiar faces already. So uh, today we're going to be talking about the evolving model of the Wikipedia student assignment. So basically the project we have for instructors and university students, uh, right, to add information to Wikipedia. We're going to talk about how things have changed, give you some historical context, right, because we've been around for 14 years. And so kind of uh, give you an idea of where we started, how things have changed, and kind of where we are right now, right? Um, and so, take it away, Ian. Okay, so I'm going to start with an outline of the student program and a, bit, a little bit of our history. It started out as a WMF project, the Public Policy Initiative, with started in 2010 with a handful of classes. This then developed into the uh, Wikipedia education program, which still exists or doesn't. <laughs> um, anyway, still existed in WMF until at least a year ago. I'm not sure what happened the last year. And then we were spun out as a separate nonprofit in, uh, in 2014. So the start of it, of our work, the start of the organization's work was as part of WMF, but we've been on our own for the last decade. Yeah, and kind of, uh, I really like this infographic because it gives you an idea of how we all uh, fit together, right, in this collaborative project. And so we have, uh, so we have Wiki Education, right? Um, we provide the teaching resources, uh, the platform that we call the dashboard uh, for the students and for the instructors to use, right? as they are editing Wikipedia, right? We provide, so through these resources, we provide the students with foundational skills, right? So the basics of what they need to know to start editing. Um, so they're not, you know, going in this blind, right? At least they have some idea of the uh, core guidelines and policies um, before they start editing. Um, we are also, right, so the other resource they have is access to us, right? Um, Wikipedia experts, so they have, uh, you know, if students ever have any questions or if instructors ever have any questions, they can ask us, right? Um, and then in this collaboration, right, the instructors, we don't expect the instructors to be the Wikipedia experts, right? A lot of our university instructors haven't edited Wikipedia before, and so what they bring to the table is they are the sub subject matter experts, right? So as students are deciding like what articles to work on or uh, gaps in existing articles to address, that is where the instructors come in, where they can share their expertise and guide students on the subject matter, right? Um, they also are the ones that obviously evaluate the students' uh, performance, right? The students' contributions for their grade. Um, and then the student editors are the ones that are doing the project, right? Although sometimes instructors, we, we advise instructors um, to go along with the students in the process so that they are also learners, right? And uh, experiencing what it's like to be an editor for Wikipedia, right? But the students are the ones that are researching and collecting information um, and creating the content to add to Wikipedia, right? And we're all invested in improving the project, right? The Wikipedia project, so. So over the, over the 14 years that this project has, in, has existed, there have been a lot of changes in the way, in the structure of the assignment, in the way it works. Now, back in 2010, I think it was, I can bring my notes, I think it was 16 classes, 210 students. And since then, the program has grown a lot. Once we were on our own as a, as a separate nonprofit, we expanded a lot. Um, year after year, a lot of new classes, the, the bars of the classes, the dots of the students, student editors. COVID came along with a dip in 
a lot of things and changed, changed the world in a lot of ways. So we're in a sort of COVID recovery phase, but this is the, the overall ch change in terms of what we've done. And the more students that are editing, the bigger the impact of the students on, on Wikipedia. And if uh, these stats that we have up here uh, are from our dashboard and they're of the current term, this is the fall 2024 term uh, you see at the bottom and above is the spring 2024 term. So you could see, right, how many courses participated this year um, or have so far, right? We have more than, what is that? Uh, more than 600 courses participating across the United States and Canada, right? more than 10,000 students have been adding information to Wikipedia. Uh, so you could just check out the words added columns, uh, the articles edited, right? This is um, an idea of, of the impact, right, that our program is having. Um, and also the scale of what we're supporting. So one of our needs is to figure out how do we support all that without causing chaos. <laughs> Controlled chaos, right? So, so far, WikiEd has uh, supported 6,500 courses throughout our 14 years. We've had about 132,000 students, right? Worked on more than 141,000 articles and added 110 million words to Wikipedia. Um, that's an interesting fact. The number of words students have donated to the world uh, is the equivalent of 80 volumes of printed encyclopedias, right, through uh, their additions to Wikipedia. Now, um, if you're here for the keynote this morning, you saw the, uh, what you call the oh shit curve. And this is it over, this is, up to, this is uh, WMF data up to 2018. And one of the things you can see here is you see the decline in the leveling off. And then the yellow is, or gold or whatever color that is, is our student participants. So over time, student editors have contributed to a large part of the stabilization of the numbers that, um, of Wikipedia editors. So. It is, there's a significant impact this is, has had on, or there appears to be a significant impact this has had on stabilization. Okay. Um, one of the important things, in a part, apart from just numbers, apart from the potential expertise they bring as, uh, as working under the guidance of subject matter experts, is the fact that uh, you know, Wikipedia has always had a demographic problem in terms of gender balance. The, in North America, in the US and Canada, I think the average Wikipedia participants are about 22% women. Ours are 70% women and uh, non-binary and other. So, you know, demographically, this enriches the body of contributors, adds a lot of perspectives, a lot of topics of interest that might never have gotten added otherwise. And in addition, uh, our population is much more reflective of, this is for the US, of the uh, racial and ethnic demography, demography of the US, while Wikipedia's contributors as a whole are uh, badly out underrepresented among Black or African American, Hispanic or Latino, Latina, Latinx, overrepresenting white students, uh, white contributors. Ours are more balanced, um, perhaps overrepresenting Asian Americans, but better than. Uh, better than 1% 1, 1 African American. All right, so the wiki expert. Um, the, yes, the history of the wiki expert role. So one of the important, one of the big parts of, of supporting large numbers of students is, isn't just having resources, it's having people who know Wikipedia. 
I'm happy to wear my, my 20 year ribbon. Um, and, but the idea, so the original idea was to recruit volunteer ambassadors. Some of these were campus ambassadors, some of these were online ambassadors and train them and they would come into classes or they would zoom into classes and provide the training, provide the knowledge about Wikipedia. Um, the pro one of the challenges with this is as the program got bigger, there was, uh, you know, you couldn't necessarily match a volunteer with, with a professor in a given class or region. Um, and there was less standardization. I mean, every Wikipedian has a different opinion of how to do things right. And so there was um, differences there. Sometimes there were challenges with expectations from the faculty, like they want, they expected more of the volunteers. And then it was, you know, then it was the role of the volunteer to say, no, I'm not going to grade your work, which puts a lot of burden on, on somebody who's there just as a volunteer. So in 2014, we changed the structure. We added a formal staff role as a, initially as a Wikipedia content expert. Um, Adam, who was one of the two of the, the first two and me were the, we started off there. Um, the content, the framing of the name turned out not to be the best because while we were focused on content areas, um, we weren't content experts, we were Wikipedia experts. So eventually the, the role changed and the name changed to reflect the fact that we were Wikipedia experts, that that was our area of expertise and that was the place we were providing support and we weren't telling students how to edit uh, on a subject I know nothing about. <laughs> So that brings us to the current uh, model of the Wikipedia experts, Ian and I, right, uh, where we are available to students, uh, not 24 seven, because we need time to sleep, right? But uh, we are there during business hours, uh, providing consistent support for students and instructors, right, on our dashboard, which we'll see recently, we'll, which we'll see soon. Uh, we have a get help button that sends us a message directly, right? So we are there to answer any questions they may have. We, through the dashboard, we are also tracking student work and we're able to help instructors navigate this world, right? I like to tell our students and our instructors, like we are, we are, we are gonna be guests, right? In this Wikipedia community, we're gonna be a part of it. Typically our students are there for like a term, right? But it takes time to learn, right? How to behave in this new world, right? What are the rules or not rules? What are the guidelines, right? That dictate um, what, how to create this information. So uh, it can be scary going in there dark, right? And so I like, our role is Wiki, or official title is Wikipedia experts, but I like, I like to consider more, myself more of a guide, right? Making sure, Everything is sailing smoothly and uh, making sure our students are on track with their projects. Um, and so some of the resources we have on hand to help them out, right, uh, throughout the years have been editing handouts, right? Um, these are available to students according to subjects, to their, they are subject specific, right? It gives them an idea of like what to expect when they're editing in these um, content areas. Right, uh, so we have that available for classes. Um, it's also important to note. It's also important to note here that I stole this slide from my colleague Colleen, and I forgot to change the color of the header. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then our handy dashboard is very, very important um, in making this whole thing possible. Really, right. Um, so through the dashboard, like I mentioned earlier, we're able to track what students are up to, what content they, they are adding. Um, it also, I call it like the headquarters, right, of the project. This has everything they need in terms of training modules, exercises, which we're gonna see right now, right? This is kind of the one stop for them to prepare themselves with the foundational skills to edit on Wikipedia. Um, and so, let's see, let's go to this slide, right? Uh, so part of the dashboard is the timeline 
where we have broken down the project, right? And all of this is customizable according to the instructor, how, they, how long they want the project to be. We recommend a minimum of six weeks to really give the students a chance to prepare, right? Um, and so the, the instructor is the ones that chooses like the dates of the project. They also, we have a, a dashboard wizard. wizard. Assignment design wizard. Yeah, assignment design wizard that asks them questions to make sure this works for their specific, right, teaching, uh, teaching a uh, course, right? And so this is fantastic, right? We, how do I say this, um, the timeline, right, will have what each student should be working on that week, right? We've uh, designed it so that it's not incredibly overwhelming, right? And, uh, and so we've broken it piece by piece so that students can take their time in learning guidelines and policies, right? The other cool tool that the dashboard has is this authorship highlighting tool that will show exactly what each student has added to the article, right? So for example, here we have two students that worked in a group uh, to edit this mass surveillance in China article, right? One student's contributions are highlighted in purple, the other is highlighted in red. Um, and so that makes it easy for instructors to be able to look over the work that their students are doing. Right. And again, I talked about the training modules. Um, we've broken it down so that the students are covering the basics of editing, right? And these can be revisited in the event that they need a refresher. I know I'm always pointing students back to these training modules um, so that we make sure they are on track and they have a good understanding of what it takes, right, to, to create uh, knowledge for Wikipedia. And creating the dashboard was probably the biggest uh, technological step in making it possible to do the assignment at this scale. Mm -hmm. So back in, you know, 2010 or 2012 or so, it was just a education extension on Wikipedia. Um, my former colleague Jamie, who was supporting at that stage, talked about having to email instructors to get students' usernames and how difficult that was. And then there was no way to tell them what they needed to do this week. There was no way to embed the assignments and all this. So this has been a huge work, mostly my colleague Sage, Sage Ross, who I'm sure a lot of you know. And it's it's an incredible piece of technology. If you're using the public version, the programs and events dashboard, it's the same sort of thing. And if you want to know more about that, we have a session tomorrow. So one of the things is, um, you know, we've had to learn how to do this right, how to do this better. The, when the program started off, there was no visual editor or it wasn't very good at the time. Teaching students to edit in Wikicode was a huge barrier. Um, as the visual editor improved, giving them a WYSIWYG editor made it so much easier for them to contribute, much lower barrier to get started. Also, the site tool, the ability to create references, I was, um, you know, I was a committed Wikicode editor until I realized how easy the site tool made things. And um, I edit in Visual Editor now and switch to the Wikicode to fix things. <laughs> um, oh, that was supposed to be something else, <laughs> the second point. That was supposed to be um, the, the student embrace of, or the student's use and something we don't have a, the best support or a sense of is mobile editing. Students are of the generation that does everything on their phone. Um, I learned a lot in Hannah's presentation this morning and understand most of the experience I had before that was, okay, a student asks a question, how do you do this? I'm looking at the mobile app and trying to figure out, okay, uh, how do you do this? How do you fix this problem? They send you a screenshot, but it's one of the things that um, it is still a challenge. Uh, I'm not quite sure if they see notifications yet on the mobile version, but they didn't until fairly recently. So, and if they don't see notifications, they can't see when somebody tells them uh, they've got to stop edit worrying. 
Um, also, some of the other things that we learned had to do with what types of classes were worth the effort. We, at first, we used to have a lot of these small assignments where students might make, might add a reference or something like that. That, it turns out that, um, you know, that works well for an edit-a-thon or something, but releasing a whole class of students onto Wikipedia to do that tends to create more problems than, than it's worth. Very large classes are a challenge to work with. We only accept very large classes from a few experienced people, and we keep as close an eye as possible on that. And then the big thing is our unit of retention is the instructor, not the student. Some students stick around, very few do, but it's the instructors who stick around year by year and learn and become experts and write a book on Wikipedia <laughs> um, are the people that it's really important for us to do. And we need, to, we need instructors to trust us to know what we're doing, but we also, over time, it's good when, as they become more competent and knowledgeable. Um, and then finally, the new editor experience, the psychological barrier to editing Wikipedia for the first time. Um, it's nice to, that they can draft in sandboxes where they can make mistakes, but the more time they spend in sandboxes, the harder it is for them to make even a simple edit on Wikipedia. They're afraid they'll break things. You can tell people as often as you want that it's impossible for them to break Wikipedia, <laughs> but they're still afraid or they're afraid that they're changing somebody's work and the person who created this article will be upset at them or something like that. And then students who are like, I don't want to bother these people, please bother us. It's always better to bother us because if they don't bother us and they just blunder their way through it, we're probably going to spend a lot more time uh, cleaning up. Sure. Um, and then throughout, right, throughout the years, we've incorporated different things into our uh, support, right? One of them are, uh, one of these things is office hours that we host for instructors every week, Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific time on Zoom. <laughs> we have that open time for instructors to come in and ask us any questions they may have, right? It also serves as a like an informal gathering space for you know, these instructors to talk to other instructors and hear what they're up to, right? How are they incorporating this project? What have they done that has worked for them or that hasn't worked for them, right? And I feel like that's one of the, I think that's the most impactful um, outcome from the, these office hours is that they get to see the group of people that they are, right, a part of. Um, and I feel like that's a very, you know, I feel like that's very motivating knowing that there are others like you doing this project, even if you're like the only one on your campus, right, that I've heard in your department or something, right, they are not alone in higher education. And so that's, um, uh, it's a very, I think it's a very helpful part of our support uh, that we provide. We also have these like quarterly workshops where we talk about the different parts of the project, right? We introduce the project, we go over the dashboard, and I, you know, I suggest that they follow along and click with me as I'm showing the different tabs and stuff. Um, also, we have like a workshop on developing a bibliography, right, which is um, the bread and butter of this project. I think LT said that earlier, right? And so we have been, you know, improving, I think, our support for our instructors so that they know more about uh, Wikipedia and just are gaining more skills uh, as they continue to do this project and hopefully feel more confident, right? Um, because we were saying, uh, or what we said before, one of the, uh, one of the most important factors in, in, in our intention is when the instructor is excited, right? If the instructor's excited about this project, then their students get excited about this project and tend to do a lot better work, <laughs> right? And just tend to pay more attention and feel more invested in what they're doing. And so um, that's really why we have a lot of these resources for our instructors. And I think since we're down to a minute, I'll just jump through the last bit. Uh, basically, we can't do our job without the community. Uh, if you don't believe that, look at the archives of the um, education notice board and see that, uh, how things started off. It's, it's a scary place. <laughs> um, and then finally, the importance of content. 
This is an uh, uh, impact visualizer tool that Sage is working on. The, in a couple of subject areas, the dark purple is other editors, the light purple is the impact of student editors either across a broad, a large area that's, that a class works on, or a more focused thing on, in this case, African American uh, contributors to the Manhattan Project. And with that, we could perhaps take any questions um, if the next people want to sh set up. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, great presentation, and, and thank you guys so much for your work um, with WikiEd. As a writing instructor who uses, who's used Wiki Education for a long time, um, I'm starting to get a lot more uh, student prose that's generated by large language models. And I'm just wondering if you guys are encountering that for better or for worse, as you're reviewing student work in Wikipedia, are you starting to notice um, some of that type of content and like what are the ramifications? Is it maybe an improvement in some cases or is it uh, disastrous in other cases? I'm just interested in hearing about that. Well, the, um, the, if it is an improvement, we're not going to notice it. <laughs> but I have seen a lot of very promotional writing that if you look at this looks very much like an LLM, uh, sometimes with hallucinated references and so on, because they're drawing from Wikipedia. If you're writing a Wikipedia article about it, there probably isn't a good article, a good uh, knowledge base to train the model on. The, so there's, there, that is part of a problem. One of the things that I'm interested in to, to work more with to perhaps get around that is to shift them more towards at least the ones who aren't creating new articles, to shift them more towards making smaller contributions so that they're, you know, it's, it's not the big dump of a LLM bit of writing. Um, but it is, it is a challenge. Uh, Liana has a session tomorrow or Sunday. I'm not sure. Sunday, I think, um, on Wikipedia and AI. It is, uh, you know, it's a problem. I might not be as uh, optimistic as um, Mariana this morning, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's the problem that Wikipedia and all knowledge online has to deal with. And uh, for me, I can't, well, uh, AI can't crash and burn fast enough. <laughs> I, I'd like to add something to this because um, what, or I say this, I feel like we've, we're kind of ready for this. Like our, one thing that I, ha I haven't seen like a crash and burn, right, from the introduction of AI, because we really, we emphasize that bibliography piece, right, where we ask the students um, to, make, to compile a list of their sources, and we ask them to evaluate each source, right, number one. So if our instructors, and we really emphasize this, right, it's like have their students do this, because then, you know whether they are using legitimate sources or if they're just you know, going to chat GPT and creating fake ones, right? And so if they are able to follow those steps and really engage with that first step, I feel like that kind of sets them up um, to make sure that their students are actually doing the work, right? Engaging with the material, which is a really good part about this project, I think, um, right? Because if they are using that, that right, if they are, going and researching, collecting sources, and then they type up their draft or whatever. They use ChatGPT to like fix up the language, right? Then that's kind of a win in some ways, right? Obviously, um, it takes skills, right, to use any LLM model uh, in a productive way, but um, I feel like that part about our project is uh, it's a good safeguard uh, against AI. Optimist, pessimist. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we're out of time, so. Two. Or, okay. Um, okay. Last, last question. I was an instructor for the project last year. It was wonderful, but I would like to make a 
pitch. Um, for my students, we wrote new articles, and the community was great in helping us edit those. And if we could get volunteer Wikipedians to help edit and watch what people are doing, that would be fantastic. But it is a wonderful project. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. It's, it's always a balance between the community can help a lot, yeah. but we can't put that much pressure on the community Volunteers. On the volunteer, on volunteer time. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's thank you so much. The conclusion of presentation. Thank you.